Hey, family, it's Coach Josh, and in today's video, we're going to be talking about the top five things that holds us back from winning when it comes to strongholds. And we're also going to be talking about at the end of this video, how to destroy strongholds. With that being said, let's get to some prerequisite points that I want to give you. The first point that I want to read to you is this. The enemy wants access to our souls to prevent the power of our spirit man from coming out. The first thing that I want you to understand when it comes to strongholds is the enemy wants access to our souls to prevent the power of our spirit man from coming out. That's very key for us to understand because when it comes to spiritual warfare, a lot of us are clueless about the, the enemy's attacks in our soulless realms. His goal in life is to ensure that he gets access to our soul to prevent the power of our spirit man. See, we are a three-part being. We are our spirit, we have a soul, and we live in a body. Let me say it again. We are a spirit, we have a soul, and we live in in a body. We have to understand our uh, triune self. We have to understand that we are a one person, three parts. The issue is most of us live in the dimensions of our soul and our body, but we neglect our spirit man. And the enemy knows that most people are not willing to grow spiritually. Most individuals are clueless of who they really are. So if he gains access to your soul, where your thoughts, emotions, and all those different things are, then he can prevent the power of the spirit man from coming out. Now, how does he gain access to our soul? I spell S-O-U-L. Here is how he gains access to our soul. Number one, S, seeds of deception. The enemy often plants seeds of deception, distorting truth and sowing doubts in our minds. So he knows that the best way to prevent the power of your spirit man to prevent your personality, your gifts, your talents, or or for um, the gifts of the spirit or the fruit of the spirit to exude from you. He plants seeds to distort the truth. His goal is deception. Because if he can get into deception, he can hinder uh, uh, any type of success. So what truth has been distorted in your mind? The truth about marriage, the truth about singleness, the truth about parenting, the truth about you. If he can distort that truth, then he can gain access into your soul to keep you from holding. See, the enemy doesn't want you to hold the promises of God. So in order for you not to hold the promise of God, I have to hold you back from the power. If I hinder the power, I can hinder the promise. See, the promises are guaranteed or the promises are out there. But if I can hold the growth of your spirit, man, if I can hold the release of your spirit, man, by creating strongholds in you, then you will never hold the promises. And he does that, number one, through seeds of deception. Number two, opportunities exploited. Identifying vulnerable moments. The enemy exploits opportunities, taking advantage of weaknesses or unguarded aspects of our lives. So he's an opportunist. He exploits opportunities. He uses or they use his demonic spirits, uses opportunities that were either started when you were seven, that started when you was 10, opportunities that you were unaware of. That's why the enemy attacks us in our most vulnerable places, because he knows or in our most formative years. He knows that the prefrontal cortex is not developed. He understands that most churches are not developed. He knows that most homes are not developed. And when these areas are not developed, demonic spirits can get access to uh, exploited opportunities, that broken home, that breakup, that, that, that whatever it is. He then exploits those opportunities and creates strongholds. Next you, undermining unity. By fostering division and discord within ourselves or relationships, the enemy weakens our spiritual unity and resolve. So he doesn't want you to be unified. See, God is in unison. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit are, uh, are self-sufficient in of themselves. See, they are in unity. The enemy doesn't want us to be unified like God is unified on the inside. See, he doesn't want our spirit, soul, and body to be in partnership with each other. He doesn't want your body and your soul to be submitted to the spirit of God in your spirit to ensure that you win in life. And so when he causes disunity in you, 
and then breaks up key relationships, then he gains access into your soul. Last but not least, luring lies. Through enticing falsehoods, the enemy lures individuals away from spiritual truths, leading them astray with deceptive promises. So the devil gains multiple or demons gain access to our souls through seeds of deception, opportunities, exploited, undermining unity, and luring with lies. Now, let's continue. I have some more points. I'm going through quickly so I can get done early. First off, I want to say this. Here's the problem. Many believers are not trained and equipped for warfare, hindering advancement. Many believers are not trained and equipped for warfare. Whether you believe it or not, my friend, you are in a war. And the enemy's after access. See, a stronghold is an area in your life the enemy has gained access, whether it's through deception, whether it's opportunities exploited, whether it's through undermining unity, or if it's through luring lies. He gains access. See, militarily, well, I'll get that a little bit later. But the problem is many believers are not trained and equipped for warfare, hindering events. So you got to ask yourself, what is hindering you from advancing? What's hindering your marriage from advancing, your singleness from advancing, your children from advancing, your life from advancing? It's possible because of a stronghold in your life. Now, let's define what a stronghold is because we've got a lot to cover tonight. Hey, my sister, it's good to see you. Thank you for, for joining me. It's always good seeing you. Now, let's define what a stronghold is. A stronghold in the soul refers to a deeply rooted and persistent negative thought pattern, belief, or emotional state that holds significant influence and control over an individual's mindset and behavior. These strongholds often hinder personal growth, well-being, and their pursuit of positive change. Overcoming them often requires intentional effort, self-awareness, and a shift in mindset or perspective. So a stronghold in our soul. And before I get there, our soul holds us, uh, our thoughts, our memories, our emotions, our ideas, our knowledge bank, our skill sets, and our, um, there's one other, but I forgot. But our soul holds us all of that. So you got to understand that the enemy's trying to access or have a hold in your thought patterns to have a hold in your emotions, to have a hold in your ideas and creativity, to have a hold in your knowledge bank and what you know, or have a hold in regards to ignorance. He wants to have a hold. Meaning, if I can get access to your memories and use that opportunity that was exploited when you was 12 to hold you back until you 42, how many people right now are in their 40s, in their 30s, in their 50s, and have not achieved certain advancements because of what was or what happened to them at 14? See, the enemy wants you from the womb to the tomb. And he knows that a lot of women, a lot of people or kids were in the wombs of moms. And in that womb, they felt rejection. That's why abortion is at all time. High. That's why the thought of abortion is at all time, because even a thought can trigger a level of resentment in the soul and the spirit of a child that's being formed in their mother's womb. So he wants you from the womb to the tomb. And if he can't get you to the womb, he'll try to get you through wounds. If he can't get you at the womb, he will try to wound you between the ages of one to seven. Because one to seven is when you really become your personality and yourself. So if I can wound you within those years or between eight to 16, then he might have a chance to have you until you older. But when we understand how these strongholds work, then we'll be able to say, okay, I got to ask myself, what are those deeply rooted negative thought patterns, beliefs, or emotional states that holds a significant influence and control over my mindset or behavior. So right now, your mindset and your behavior could be significantly influenced by bad thought patterns, beliefs, and emotional states. So you got to say, okay, what emotional state, what belief systems, and what um, thought patterns are affecting the way I think and how I behave? These strongholds often hinder, here we go, personal growth, well-being, and the pursuit of positive change. Let's keep going. Now, let's talk about the metaphor militarily about a stronghold. 
The metaphor of a stronghold and a soul akin to a strong military occupation suggests that negative thought patterns, beliefs, or emotional states act as entrenched forces preventing the expression of one's gifts, talents, uniqueness, and the fruit and the gifts of the spirit that is housed in the spirit man. These mental and emotional barriers serve as obstacles, much like an occupying force blocking the free flow of positive attributes and potential inherent, uh, inherent in an individual spirit. Overcoming these strongholds involves a strategic approach to reclaiming, I love that, we're going to talk about that, to reclaiming mental and emotional territory for personal growth and self-expression. So your soul is like real estate. The devil can't have your spirit. Once you are, the spiritual contract has been signed and you've been sealed by the Holy Spirit. The enemy cannot get access to your spirit, but he can get access to your soul and body. How, Josh? How can someone with the Holy Spirit be uh, oppressed demonically in the soulless realm and the physical realm? For instance, we, you and I have all been sick before. All of us who are saved have been sick with the Holy Ghost. The cold, flu, stomach virus cannot infect the spirit man, but because of the uh, 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 effect of our immune system, a virus can get if, in, inside of our body to cause sickness. So the reason why a lot of us are sick in our soul is because he got a hold of it by infecting the way we think, by infecting the way we believe, by the, infecting the way that we behave. So our soul is real estate. If you look at your soul as this huge plot of land, you will see thoughts over here, memories over here, emotions over here, belief systems down here, skill set. You see all this real estate, right? That's why the Bible says we're transformed by the renewing of our mind, which is our soul. So in order for us to really begin to have a soul that can hold that we have to regain those territories. So the territory of your thoughts, there is there is a little uh, facility that's occupied by the enemy. He knows I can always use what this person remembers of their childhood against them. So now he has built a force of demonic influence or seeds that are installed to hinder in that particular area. So I want you to think about what type of thoughts do you think? How do you remember what you remember? What type of ideas do you uh, conceive? What knowledge bank, what knowledge are you allowing in your knowledge bank? So the devil knows that most people do not have guards or do not understand the divine powers to pull down these strongholds so he can uh, access those different areas in the vast real estate of our soul, preventing. So when the Holy Spirit is trying to uh, pull that gift of the of spirit out of you to produce love, joy, peace, to rejuvenate and restore the real estate of your soul, those different areas hinders that advancement. That's why we're transformed by the renewing of our mind. So we have to allow the Holy Spirit, who's the only one able to defeat these strongholds in our, in our lives. But if we choose not to let them go, then they won't let us go. So when you look at it from that vantage point, you're like, man, it is a warfare. Like there's literally a war in you. You and I cannot defeat the wars against us if we don't first win the war in us. How can we win the wars against our marriages, the wars against our children, the wars against our ministries, the wars against our business, if there's still a civil war inside of us? The best way to topple a nation is to create civil war within the nation. So the best way to topple an individual is to create civil war in the individual a constant battle. But if we allow the Holy Spirit to rejuvenate us, we can win the war within, then we're able to win the wars against us. So 
this metaphor of a stronghold when it comes to military gives us some insight on the war inside of us. It says here, suggest that a negative thought patterns, beliefs, or emotional states act as entrenched forces. They act as literally an army against you. Imagine you defeating you. Imagine you, the reason why you're losing is because you're, you're losing on the inside. So they're entrenched forces. The enemy has allowed these demonic spirits and influences in this memory bank of your life, in your thought patterns to be entrenched, rooted, preventing the expression of one's gifts, talents, uniqueness, and the fruits and gifts of the spirit. See, that's what's in your spirit, man. Those things are not in your soul. Your gifts, your talents, your uniqueness in regards to your personality and the fruit and gifts of the spirit are lodged, locked in your spirit, man. But if the soul is unhealthy, those things cannot get through, through your hands, through your creativity, through your businesses, through your whatever. Because in order to change things in our lives, we got to be loving, we got to be joyful, we got to be peaceful. We got to be patient. We got to be uh, faithful, gentle, all that kind of stuff. We have to be our authentic selves. We also have to be uh, um, masters of our gifts and talents. Imagine where you would be next year, this time next year, if you mastered your talents and gifts, if you uh, 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 welcomed your authentic self, and you're operating at high optimal levels of the fruit of the spirit, and you dibbling and dabbling in the gifts of the spirit. Imagine how impactful you would be in the army of God. These mental and emotional barriers serves as obstacles. The devil want as many obstacles inside of you that you'll never overcome what's outside of you. Much like an occupying force blocking the free flow of positive attributes and potential inherent in an individual spirit. See, also in your spirit, is your potential. God has already installed in you, in your spirit, man, the fullness of your potential, that if you allow your spirit, man, to be uh, uh, regenerated and you allow your soul to be restored, then you will be able to uh, tap into or reach into your full potential. And so the enemy knows or the enemy doesn't know your potential, but he wants to hear the probability of you tapping in your potential by placing obstacles inside of you. All right, let's keep going. Strongholds in the soul are often developed through repeated negative experiences, trauma, or persistent exposure to destructive influences. So this is how a stronghold is developed. It's developed, number one, by repeated negative uh, experiences. Some strongholds we have in our lives have been inherited because the, our grandma did the same thing to the mom and the mom did the same thing to the daughter. And all of a sudden now there's a stronghold of babies out of wedlock. There's a stronghold of a, a strong, independent, <clears throat> a excessively strong, independent women or lustful men or men as selfishly ambitious. And it creates those different strongholds generationally. And if not careful, those negative experiences will then be perpetuating through us and to our children's children. Trauma. Some of us were sexually, mentally, physically abused. Traumatic experience or persistent exposure to destructive influences. What do you watch? What do you listen to? What is influencing you? So when these things are repeated or persistent, they create strongholds in our soul. They can also form as a result of ingrained beliefs, cultural influences, or significant life events that shapes a person's mindset. Ingrained beliefs, what you were indoctrinated by poor believers growing up. We're talking about poor believers, don't mean we're talking about Christian believers. We're talking about poor believers in self, poor believers in uh, opportunities, and, and the victimization start creeping in as a stronghold. Uh, limiting beliefs creeps in. So ingrained beliefs, also cultural influences. The things in culture, the satanic system, the world wide web, 
and also significant life events that shape our mindset. And so if those areas are not renewed, then my friend, we can't really become new and, and, and achieve what we desire to achieve. Over time, these experiences create deep-seated patterns. We're talking about deep-seated. You ever see when you finish eating a good meal and you sit in that chair, you deep-seated? <laughs> The itis is tripping in. It's nap time. You deep seed it. So over time, these experiences create deep seated patterns of thinking and emotional responses, solidifying strongholds that hinder personal growth and well being. So the enemy knows all I got to do is have you repeat this over and over again. Have a traumatic experience affect you or allow you to be immersed or to allow you to be immersed under influences. So that over time, being in these environments will create a deep-seated pattern of thinking and emotional responses that's outside of the things of God, solidifying strongholds that hinder personal growth and well-being. Now, here are the five things. I have a lot more points to cover. I'm trying to get it done in about 25 minutes. But here are the five things that holds us back from winning wars and opportunity. We're talking about five things that have a strong hold on us or have strong holds on us, keeping us from winning wars and opportunity. Do you know there is a war coming to you? I am fully aware. That's maybe why I'm wearing rigs. I'm war ready. <laughs> but there's a, a war coming against my marriage, I'm sure. There's wars that's going to try to come against my daughter's mind. There are wars that are going to try to come against my properties. There are going to be wars that's going to try to come against my opportunities. There's going to be wars that's going to try to come against these things. So if I have strongholds on the inside... I cannot win the wars against me, nor be able to capitalize on opportunities. Do you know we that embody the Holy Spirit are unfair? Is an unfair uh, fight against the enemy? Right now, we possess the power that makes us undefeatable. If we allow ourselves to be treatable. We got to be treated, cured, healed, emotionally, mentally, psychologically, so that we'll be able to win these psychological warfares, physical warfares, marital warfares, parental warfares, so that we can be the beacons of light that says, why do they keep winning? How many of y'all right now put in chat and say, I, I want to win? How many people right now says, Coach Josh, I want to win? Post in the comments now. Because if you want to win, you got to see if these things are holding you back from winning. Now, H-O-L-D-S real quickly, because I got to break down a couple of scriptures and I'll, I'll be out you guys' way. Um, number one, five things that holds us back from winning wars and opportunity. Number one, habitual negative comparisons. Repeatedly comparing oneself unfavorably to others fosters hurtful thought patterns, undermining confidence, and impeding the ability to recognize individual strengths and success. Right now, there are a lot of people watching me right now that says, hey, the reason why I'm not winning, because I have a stronghold of habitual negative comparison. Key word, negative. There's nothing wrong with comparing yourself to someone that's winning. What I mean, you're comparing yourself to other people. We're talking about comparing skills, comparing uh, uh, habits, but we're not talking about comparing oneself. We're talking about identity. So habitual negative comparisons <laughs> or repeatedly comparing oneself unfavorably. So when you look at someone and when you look at them, you look at yourself unfavorably, that's a stronghold. The enemy loves comparison because comparison robs you of joy. Joy, without joy, you're not strengthened. 
Without strength, you can't win. So he knows all I got to do is have you to be habitual and comparing negatively. Because then this will foster, feed, grow hurtful thought patterns. Oh, I'm not as good as her. Oh, I'll never be like him. Oh, I'll never have that. Then all of a sudden, now that holds you back from recognizing your individual strengths and success. So it says, uh, fosters hurtful thought patterns, undermining. The enemy wants to undermine. He wants to remove the carpet from up under you. Undermine your confidence. He knows if I, if I could get up underneath and rob you of your confidence, you will sink down to deeper depths of dark emotions that will hinder promotion. Number two, overwhelmed by regret. Carrying a burden of regret in our souls can prevent us from seizing opportunities and making positive decisions for the future. Yeah, you messed up. We've all made mistakes, but we don't got time to be sitting in regret. Some of us are just so overwhelmed in our souls because of regret that it's hindering us from going out there to get. I don't got time to regret. I got time to re-get. <laughs> I don't got time to re I got to go out there and get it again, get it again, get it again, get it again. Win again, win again, win again, win again. I don't got time to regret. I got to go and re-get. Go back out there and get it again, get more success again, keep stockpiling because of the righteousness of Jesus that was imputed on me. So there's no need to be overwhelmed by regret. Yeah, you made us. How many of us right now? We cannot get what we can't we can't get what's left of 2023 because of what happened in 2003. How many of us? God has a lot that he wants to give you in 2024. But because of what happened in 2014, you're not going to be able to achieve or receive what he already has in your 2024. And how many things are stockpiled in the enemy storage facilities of all the things that were robbed from us since the day we were able to get anything? But I love what the word says. That he'll redeem the time. He'll we can get back what the canker worm stolen. So the enemy can then restore. We will have to restore everything that was stored from us to gain now. But we have to renew ourselves. But how many people right now are overwhelmed by regret? You don't have time for that. Another O that I put here is overlooked opportunities. Ignorance or overlooking potential opportunities stemming from a lack of awareness or closed mindedness can hold us back from winning. So right now, a lot of us live in the idea of ignorance is bliss. Some of us, we don't have a, um, our biggest issue is self-awareness. We have an awareness issue right now around you are so many invisible opportunities. Let me take it back. Are so many invisible and visible opportunities, but because we got scales on our eyes and because we're blinded by our poor belief systems, we can't see the obvious. That's why you got to be a constant observer because opportunities are everywhere and opportunities fall at the laps of observers. And so if you constantly observing, and you're constantly serving, then you'll be receiving what you would then be deserving. So when you're constantly observing and you tap into the spirit of God, that man, you know how many random things created book ideas? <clears throat> how many random moments created video content because I was observing? Or how many of us were ignorant to the reasons why we have health problems, ignorant to why we have emotional problems? And having that type of frame of mind that stays in ignorance becomes a stronghold. So the enemy knows, man, that boy, that girl can't even see. Man, they like, like, bro, one thing that keeps me motivated is envisioning demons laughing at me. Dang, Josh couldn't even see that. Well, we got him again. That's why I stay. I keep my head on the swivel. Gideon, God said, bring all the men down to the water and see how they respond. 
He brought the men and most of the men, when they got to the water, they bowed down to the water and began to drink. The other group of men, which was a smaller number, were men who brought water to themselves and kept their head on the swivel. God then told Gideon, those men are fit for war. Those who constantly bow down to restoration or, or re not restoration, but those who bow down to refreshments are not meant for war. What does that mean? How many people bow down? to refreshing themselves through Netflix or refreshing themselves through a uh, gossip, refreshing themselves through the negative influence, refreshing themselves. They're not fit for war because, and it, that's why God uh, 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 sees how we respond with certain uh, doses of success. And if we bow down to the success, that proves we idolize the success or we idolize the opportunity to refresh ourselves. But when we know that even though my business has grown, I keep, I bring the business to me while I keep the head on the swivel. I bring the opportunity to me while I keep my head on the swivel because I know there's still war. So even though my marriage is going through an amazing time right now, I, I enjoy my marriage, but I keep my head on the swivel. Even though I know my daughter's 100% healthy, I still bring that moment to me and keep my head on the swivel. Those individuals are fit for war. But if we're ignorant and we always bow down to refreshments, then we can't expect to be successful. And for time's sake, limiting beliefs. So we said H, habitual negative comparisons. O, <clears throat> overwhelmed by regret or overlooked opportunities. L, limiting beliefs. Deep city limiting beliefs can create mental barriers, restricting our perception of what we can achieve, holding us back from success. Some of us, we just have limiting beliefs. I've done a whole video on limiting beliefs. So if you type limiting beliefs, Joshua Ezzy, I have a whole video, very powerful video. So make sure you check that out. But times I got to keep going. D, doubtful self-image. Man, it's big. A negative self-image rooted in self-doubt and insecurity can undermine our confidence and impede progress towards winning. So how do you see yourself? You got to see yourself like a child of God. You got to see yourself as a winner. You can't doubt yourself. You got to out yourself. You can't doubt. So you got to put yourself out there. You got to say, no, like, listen, I get nervous every time I speak, but I still got to put myself out there. No matter what it is that I face, no matter what insecurity you may have, I got to go out there. I remember when my wife, uh, we found out that we uh, we had a, a daughter. I began to have some doubts inside of me about being a father. But I ain't let that bother me because I know I got a heavenly father. And I know that he is a present help in a time of trouble. And he's a present help in future troubles. So there's no need for me to be troubled. So I still got to put myself out there as a father and learn on the job. Right? Also, I put a defeated mindset. Uh, a defeated mindset marked by pessimism and a lack of resilience can become a self-fulfilling prophecy, preventing us from achieving victories. How many of us, we already defeated mentally, already defeated. We're pessimistic, not opportunistic. You got to look at everything as an opportunity, not an obstacle. And due to us being defeated, we didn't develop a lack of resilience and then we create our self-fulfilling prophecy. So it's called self-sabotage, self-fulfilling prophecies, meaning that we conjure up outcomes to validate our victimization, keeping us from possessing nations. And so what it is, we'll be like, you know what? I'm going to get into a relationship already knowing it's going to fail to validate that I'm a failure. So now I can have evidence to other people for 20, 30, 40 years that the reason why I didn't do this was because of this or that. So we create our own self-fulfilling prophecies, prophesying through patterns, prophesying through uh, our own belief systems so that we can validate the others' excuses, warranting why we're not winning. Boy, this is good. S, stagnant comfort zones. Being trapped in comfort zones Resistant to change and growth can keep us from embracing new challenges and achieving personal victories. So a lot of us, we just like to be comfortable. We Honestly, some people, they don't want to win because winning takes work. Winning takes consistency. Winning takes being uncomfortable. Winning takes overcoming. Winning takes engaging the fight. 
And we just run, that's why I, 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 uh, there's a lot of people that, that, that talk about the rapture so much. Rapture, 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 rapture. And when you, and, and people just want to get up out of here, just get me to heaven. What, what? Is it our responsibility before we get to heaven is to bring heaven down here through our own relationship with God, through our gifts and talents? And so some people just, they say, I just want to stay comfortable. I don't want to go. I just want to be a, a religious I just want to be uh, 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 in my sins. I just want to be comfortable. I don't want to grow. So the five things that holds us back, number one, habitual negative comparisons, overwhelmed by regret and overlooking opportunities, L, limiting beliefs, D, doubtful self-image and defeated mindset, and S, staying in comfort zones, H-O-L-D-S, on earth as it is in heaven. Amen, my sister. Now, here are two scriptures. Now, we're going to talk about real quickly how to destroy strongholds and how to regain these territories in your soul. And then actually, I have a worksheet for you as well to help in these areas. I got to go through these quickly. So many points, so many points, so many points. Um, Ephesians 6, 12, I want to set the premise with this text so that we're going to say what we're facing. It says, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. Stop there for a minute. The moment you find yourself wrestling with someone, you've already lost the battle. If you're arguing with your wife for a long period of time, arguing with your husband for a long period of time, uh, yelling at your children for a long period of time, you've already lost. Because we wrestle not against flesh and blood. And if you look at <coughs> our society, it's a bunch of wrestlings <coughs> amongst flesh and bloods, whites, blacks. A uh, uh, subsidiary battle within different cultures. <clears throat> blacks against blacks, whites against whites, Asians against Asians, Africans against Africans, flesh and blood, flesh and blood. Uh, uh, these facial features against these facial features. This skin tone versus this skin tone. This class of people, that class of people. We're warring against things we see. And if we keep wrestling with things that we see, we'll lose with, against the things we can't see. Our enemy is invisible, and if you try to fight against the visible, then you're not going to really succeed. Give me one second. Excuse me. Thank y'all for those that bless you. <laughs> now, this is what I want to get to. 2 Corinthians 10, 45, one of my favorite scriptures to teach. It says, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal or of the flesh, but have divine power to the pulling down of strongholds. Now, before I get, I ain't finished Ephesians 6, 12. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in a heavenly place. So we have to understand that we're fighting an organized, formidable enemy that's defeated. Hear me. An organized and formidable enemy that's already defeated. But we can't defeat it if we're defeated. But we defeat it by the Holy Spirit in us, rejuvenating us constantly, keeping us refined, keeping us sharp to be a weapon. God wants us to be divine weapons. Oh my goodness. Give me one second. He wants us to be divine weapons. God is using me as a weapon, as a writer, as a speaker. Right now, the anointing that's infused in this video is a weapon. That's why when I preach, I often pray these prayers. The kids know that in my school, when I teach at places, they know I say this prayer. I come against every demonic plot and scheme of retaliation against what I'm doing against the kingdom of darkness. What I'm doing is saying I'm covering what I'm uncovering. So I'm covering as I'm uncovering. So I'm covering myself through spiritual recognition and operating in my authority while I'm being a weapon used. So before I do videos, I already counsel the warfare against my wife, the warfare against my daughter, the warfare against all the people in my life, the warfare. I've already counseled it. So they cannot even use this as retaliation against me because I've already counseled it. So God wants us to be divine weapons through our artistry, through our ingenuity, through our uh, abilities, through our talents, giftings. He wants us to be weapons in the marketplace, weapons in ministry, weapons everywhere. Pulling down strongholds. Let's keep going. 
for the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh or carnal, but have divine power to destroy strongholds. So we want to destroy these strongholds. We destroy arguments and every lofty opinion raised against the knowledge of God and take every thought captive to obey Christ. Now, what I what my goal in teaching you all is teaching you how the Bible has patterns to live by. And so that's why I got these points destroyed from. Now, how to destroy strongholds? Number one, D, divine power. Say it with me. Divine power. You and I cannot punch the devil. You and I cannot shoot the devil. You and I can't stone cold Steve Austin the devil. No, no, you and I cannot triple H the devil. You and I, we can't slap a devil. We cannot, through physical means, defeat an invisible being. You, your disciplines can, your disciplines outside of divine power cannot defeat the devil. Your money cannot defeat the devil. Your relationships, your, your lodges, whatever it is, your connections, your brotherhood, your sisterhood cannot defeat the devil. It cannot. So when you understand that, you can use all of your natural means and still won't be able to defeat your enemy. It is through divine power. Number one, you must recognize the source of strength in overcoming strongholds is the divine. Rely on spiritual guidance and power. We are in war. Soldiers have headsets connected to someone in a higher place. The most trusted person while engaging warfare is the sniper. Because when you're in the trenches, all you see are the trees. All you see are the trenches. But you got to connect with someone that's got an aerial view of what you're viewing. Right now, God has an aerial view of what I'm viewing in my marriage. So right now, in year six of my marriage, God already knows what's in year seven, year eight, year nine, year 10, year 11, all the way to year 58. He already knows. So I got to stay in tune. And it's through that divine power, spiritual guidance infused with spiritual discernment. Discernment is power. Being able to, while you in the trenches, Holy Spirit says, make a left, make a right. Trust this person, don't trust that person. Back off from this. Spend time with your daughter. Spend time with your son. Spend time with your wife. Spend time with your husband. That's divine power. Guidance is power. Because when you don't have guidance, you are not empowered. You need to be empowered to be powered. So that means you have to rely. Like I rely on this chair to hold me up. I got to rely. I have to be, in order for me to receive divine power, I got to be submitted to divine power. I have to recognize that the source of strength in overcoming strongholds is divine. I have to rely on spiritual guidance and power. If you and I do not cultivate a solid or strong relationship with God, we will not overcome the strongholds inside of us and we will not have success against the wars against us. Divine power. E, engage in warfare. Understand that the battle against strongholds is not physical but spiritual. Approach it with the mindset of spiritual warfare. Listen, get in the fight. I engage it. I don't run from it. David didn't run from Goliath. He engaged Goliath. We got to be engagers. We got to say, all right, says, I know this spiritual warfare. I'm going to I'm gonna do what Coach Josh says. I counsel every plot and scheme of the enemy over my family. I command every demonic spirit to restore and return everything that was stolen within the last 17 years of my life. I cover my family. I plead the blood. I put oil on their hands. I put oil on their doorposts. Many times I open up my front door and command every demonic spirit that's, that's territorial or has followed me to leave. I utilize... I engage with the with the recognition that I'm a child of God. Therefore, I hold authority. So when I understand that, that, that the battle against strongholds, we're talking, about, we're talking about before we can even win the battles against us, we got to say, I come against that spirit of regret. 
I come against that spirit of insecurity in the name of Jesus. I am no. Then you start reversing it, reversing the curse of it by rehearsing the scriptures that then gets in the mixture and it calls you to be a fixture in the army of God. So you'll be able to say, I come against that insecurity. And then you would, then the Holy Spirit then say, start renouncing your attachments to it. Then the Holy Spirit will say, in order to get that uh, uh, stronghold uprooted, now you got to forgive that person that wounded you. You see how the art, the war goes? I'm going to do a part two because uh, I got to teach you guys how to war, man, uh, uh, because we cannot win physical battles if we don't first win the spiritual ones. Ask strategic prayers. Employ strategic prayers to seek divine intervention in breaking down strongholds, asking for wisdom and strength. Be strategic. Don't be sporadic with your prayers. Certain seasons require strategic prayers. Certain seasons requires you can't just be sporadic. You just can't be some some days. It may require you to be on your knees for two hours. Some days it may require you to be really in tune and engage in prayer. Prayer shouldn't be sporadic all the time. Oh, hey, okay, God. Oh, thank you, God. Or pray. Most of our prayers are over food. Most of our prayers is when we go through bad times. No, we got to be strategic. Now, those, those weapons have divine power. T, take thoughts captive. Actively monitor your thoughts, identifying negative patterns and redirecting them in alignment with Christ's teachings. Listen, we defeat the devil through discipline. We become disciplined by whom we are being discipled by. In order for us to be a disciple, we have to make a decision to follow. So if you don't know Christ's teaching, then you won't have success. The Bible talks about uh, uh, for the weapons of a warfare, not of the flesh, but have divine power to destroy strongholds. We destroy arguments and every lofty opinion raised against knowledge of God. So the devil knows how much you know about God. And the devil doesn't throw a mile above what you know. He throws as much. Did God really say? He didn't go too high and too wide and too deep when he was talking to Eve. He said, did God really say? The areas you don't know about God creates vulnerabilities when it comes to war. So you got to get to know God. Because if you don't know God as a God of timing, then, then, then the enemy will creep in your mind. God has forgotten you. Oh, you've been single for a long time, hadn't you? Hmm. Unfortunate. Did God really say that he has a husband for you? Remember when he was prophesied to in 2012, God put that prophet came and prophesied to you and it bear witness with your spirit and confirm things. Why is God taking so long? Oh, your marriage going through a little hiccup right now. Oh, is, is God really, did God really say that you guys will be a beacon of light? Like, did God really say? Then what he does is when you don't know that God is a God of timing and that God is a God of pruning, that's what happened to me. When I didn't realize and understand the, and the doctrines of pruning, that I got upset with God. Why haven't I received the promises of God? Oh, God. But until I started understanding pruning, then that area could not be used into ruining me because now I understand God more. And so now I know God enough in areas where the devil can't throw. The devil is not going to throw against areas you are fully fortified in knowledge about God. He's going to throw areas where you have no clue about God and how God does things. That's elite level training, man. That's elite level. I got I to hurry up and get through it. So to take thoughts, Captain, you got to actively monitor your thoughts, identifying negative patterns, and redirecting them to align with Christ's teachings. So you got it. That's you got it. Listen, effectively redirect, but you have to have something of understanding to be be right redirectable. So you got to take that thought. So you get sheep paper, take the thought captive. What you do? What I do all the time. When I have a thought that, that is just out of the way, I take it out of the colorfulness of my soul because my soul is full of color. Emotions have color. Thoughts have colors. Memory have colors. It's too colorful now. But when it gets down to black and white, when I get that black pen, I write on that white sheet of paper, I see it for what it really is. I take it captive. Hey, TSA, what you got in the bag right there? What you got there? Because every negative thought, see, listen, we only see the seed, but we don't see the trees in the seed. Every seed has a tree full of seeds. 
So when a negative thought comes to your life, you got to say, yo, what you got in the bag? You got to have TSA. The spirit, <laughs> my TSA, TSA is the spirit, uh, 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 whatever, whatever. <clears throat> you got to let the Holy Spirit check the bags. Hey, man, that negative thought has a tree that will ruin your uh, future generations. You can't allow that in. Take that thought captive, search it. Put your arms out, buddy. Spread them legs, buddy. Pat them down. All right. Open this bag, man. Open that bag. Open your bag up. Oh, you was really about to bring this on a plane? Oh, you was really about, oh, you was really just, oh, you was really going to do this? That's what happens to take that cap. You be able to say, oh, so you was really trying to destroy my marriage with this? Oh, you was really trying to destroy my children with this? Oh, no, no, no. You can't come in here. Take thoughts captain. Or renounce arguments, reject and renounce negative arguments or beliefs that oppose God. You got to reject and renounce. Some thoughts you got to reject when they first get you. You reject, that's reject. Renounce is thoughts that has been sitting there for a while. You have to renounce them. I no longer associate with. I renounce connection with. I renounce association with. I no longer deal with this thing or a way of life at all. That's why you don't you don't argue with them. You just reject them. Ah, uh, boom, boom, we done. I don't, I don't argue. We I don't. You don't argue with the enemy. That's how you lose. Next, overcome opinions. So we talk about D, divine power. E, engage in warfare. S, strategic prayers. T, take thoughts captive. R, renounce arguments. O, overcome opinions. Challenge and overcome lofty opinions that hinder your understanding of God and His person. So He's going to give you lofty opinions. Oh, you're not you're not good enough for that. God can't use you to do mighty things like that. You got, uh-uh. Mm, don't listen. And why? Yield to Christ. Submit yourself to Christ's authority, allowing his teachings and principles to guide your thoughts and actions. So, so when you understand that destroyed, I got a worksheet for this. But for time's sake, now how to regain these territories in your soul. We talked about how a stronghold is a building or area in, in, in a, on a piece of land or in a nation that an enemy who's invading occupies to keep, uh, to gain a stronghold in that area, to create ownership. We own this part of this person. If you look at your soul, your soul is separated by ownership. Your spirit man is completely owned by God, but your soul has multiple owners. Your spirit man is owned by God. But your soul has multiple owners. Some of your soul is owned by Tyrone. Some of your soul is owned by Chelsea. Some of your soul is owned demonically, demonic oppression. Some of your soul is owned by God. But the goal is for God to have the whole. God owns not, own my, not only my spirit in full, but he owns my soul in full. Full. So this is how you regain the territories in your soul, the memories of those bad traumatic moments, the thoughts of limiting beliefs, the, the negative toxic emotions, the sexual and lustful ideas, arrogant ideas, uh, uh, money hungry ideas, the, the, the bad sinful skill habits, we, how we can regain those territories so the enemy doesn't use those occupancies to keep you from progressing into success. This is how you do it real quick. R, this is how you regain. R-E-G-A-I-N. How to regain these territories. So number one, you got to recognize strongholds, practical things. Acknowledge and identify the negative thought patterns, beliefs, or emotional states that have formed strongholds in your soul. So you got, in order to regain, you got to recognize. What are the strong, I have to acknowledge and accept. Meaning, yo, I, I have issues. The only way you can really begin to have success is through acknowledgement. And acknowledgement is the byproduct of awareness. So I have to recognize that I have strongholds. I have uh, uh, ne negative thought patterns. I have negative beliefs. I have a bad emotional state that form these strongholds. Number two, evaluate origins. Understand the origins and root causes of these strongholds. Considering past experiences and influences that contributed to their development. So find or evaluate the origins. 
Where did it start? Did it start with my mama's mama, mama? My daddy's dad's dad? Did it start with my, my girlfriend at this age, my boyfriend at this age? It started with my ex-husband? Did it start with uh, within my marriage? What year in my marriage did it start? Did this also start in year two of my mama's marriage? Oh, mama got divorced in year five. Oh, I got this in year two. Oh, now we at year four. Oh man, it looks like we might be done in year five. So you gotta look at the origin of these strongholds. Like, like what successes do I want to have? And 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 what are those things keeping me from? G, grasp positive perspectives. Shift your mindset by embracing positive perspectives and affirmations. Focusing on your inherent worth and potential that comes from God. So now, yeah, you evaluate it. Yeah, you recognize. Now you got to grasp a positive perspective because what you don't want to happen is when you do the first two, you start sinking in negative emotion. Nope, time to get positive. Time to shift perspectives that I can overcome this, that I that I, that, I, that this won't affect my life. A, actively seek support. Engage in open communication with friends, mentors, or professionals who can provide support, guidance, and encouragement throughout your journey. So you need that. You need uh, uh, active people who are active, <laughs> people who got the fruit that you want to bear. Don't follow people that, that are bare trees. Be around people that's bearing fruit. Big difference. People, they are bare tree versus a tree that bears fruit. So you got to look at trees that bears fruit, not trees that are just bare. I right. intentional mindfulness. Cultivate mindfulness to recognize and interrupt. So you got to create a manufacturing mindset, a mind that recognizes and interrupts negative thought patterns, allowing space for positive and empowering thoughts to emerge. Those book ideas, that ministry idea, that business idea, that that whatever it is, that uh, whatever it is that you're creating, you got to be intentionally mindful. Oh, they go to enemy because one thing the devil did with Jesus, the Bible says he left to a more opportune time. He going to come back again. He's going to try to use what worked before or try to use something else or to initiate another traumatic experience or to initiate something else that happened or to initiate a, a level of trying based upon what you lack in knowledge about God. Oh, they don't know this about God. Let's try to attack them over here because then we can start the thing over again. In nurture self-compassion. Develop a compassionate attitude towards yourself, recognizing that overcoming strongholds is a gradual process that, re that requires patience and self-love. My friend, it's going to take work and it's going to take time. But if you do the work and you take the time, you'll overcome these strongholds in no time. So how to regain those territories in song? Number one, recognize strongholds. E, evaluate origins. G, grasp positive perspectives. A, actively seek support. I, be intentionally mindful. And N, nurture self-compassion. Real quickly, I'm going to share uh, this um, <clears throat> worksheet. So if you go to uh, mycoachjosh.com forward slash worksheets. You'll be able to uh, uh, regain territory in your soul. So the, the, the regain, you'll be able to go through these with different questions. Uh, list negative thought patterns, beliefs, and emotional states affecting your well-being. Reflect on how these patterns. So this is great activity that will allow you to take the message of what I shared today and be activated for those who want to overcome those strongholds. And so let me pray for you, and I got to go. I'm going to pray for you all. Before I do, I'm going to see what everyone was saying. Michelle was getting busy. Stephen says, yes, sir, this is good. God gets the glory. Kia says, I want to win. Stephen says, I want to win. Michelle says, man, what you said? <laughs> Jesus. Oh, good, good, good. Dominique taking notes. Michelle was just be, was engaging. That's tough, coach. Opportunity, not obstacles. That's right. Brother Charles says, talking good, my brother. I need to tune in more often. We here, family, for you. Anytime, tap in, whatever you can tap in, family. Jacob said, yes, sir. Michelle said, yeah, he's not slow at all. Michelle says, thank you, Josh. You're right on it tonight. Exactly what I've been dealing with. Christopher says, I want to win. And you will win if you embrace what the one. <laughs> you can win when you embrace the one. In order to W-I-N, I must embrace the W-O-N. 
He already won. Therefore, I can win. Let me pray for you. And I got to go. Father, I thank you so much for these young people. <laughs> I've been talking to kids so much. These individuals that's watching me, adult or young, with the authority that has been given to me, I come against every demonic spirit, root causing, stronghold causing demonic spirit. Every demonic spirit inside of my voice, you understand that the word of God will go forth and will transform this individual's lives. I command your hands to loose them and keep and uh, loose them and let them go in order for them to go forward and grow. I come against every type of retaliation against myself, my family, or these individuals as we engage in this spiritual warfare moment. Father, I think that you're infusing in this person's individual's life a sense of peace, a sense of joy, a sense of love luring them back to the pages of your word to gain the principles and patterns to install into their life to be able to live a life of life of abundance and i thank you father god that this prayer this moment this video will be encapsulated with so much anointing that every person that watches this for thousands of years forward will feel the same transformative power that we're feeling on december 20th 2023 and father i thank you humbly using me to help these people as they journey with you. And Father, I thank you for sweet sleep for all of us. And I counsel every retaliation and plotting scheme against my family because I know this one right here is a nuclear bomb to the demonic kingdom. And God, oh, I relish in it. And I thank you, Father God, that as I go forward in ministry, Father God, it will be peaceful and with less or no retaliation. We thank you, Lord, for it. Jesus, I'm to pray. Hey, man, love y'all. Gotta go. Download the worksheet. Oh, man, books I think that might help you, resources that might help you. Got to give you that. Uh, some of the points that I share today, and I think I'm going to do Soul Ties tomorrow, Lord willing. But this book right here, uh, Soul Ties, The Purpose of Freedom, How to Untie Soul Ties, Uproot Strongholds. This will be a good book on that. I've got another book on spiritual warfare, World War Me, Winning the War Within. You cannot win the war against you if you don't first win the war in you. So a lot of these principles today stem from this book. This book is uh, my second book. So this book is like almost 10 years old. Um, this book is also maybe like eight years old. Those two books would be a benefit. Also, if you struggle with limiting beliefs and you lack mental clarity and you want to get to a place where you're absolutely clear mentally about your purpose and you're actually at a place where your mind is a manufacturing hub for you to create ideas and God can use it at a high level and these different strongholds and I even in your life, then check out my Resilient Mindset coaching program. It's all available on my website. Uh, you can go to my coaching programs or uh, programs, check out my Resilient Mindset program. We're going to do a lot, a lot of stuff that we talked about today. We're going to do it um, together in our program starting in January. So I post uh, programs there. Also, my fulfillment coaching program is for those individuals like, man, I have holes in my soul that's hindering me from holding what I desire to hold. These are for individuals who are entrepreneurs, professionals, uh, stay-at-home moms, whoever it is, who says, I want to be successful in every area. But coach, I'm losing my connection with my spouse. I'm losing my connection with my children. I'm losing my connection with God. And it's affecting my success. Some people right now, they have so much money, but they're miserable. Because wealth is not measured by how much money you have. Wealth is measured by how much wealth you have in every area of your life. And when you neglect those holes in your life, it will cost you. So that my fulfillment coaching program is not only to help you uh, make more money, but to save money by making sure that you patch up those holes in your life. Because a lot of people are spending their wealth to gain their health in every other area. Some people, they lose things uh, 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 indefinitely. And so check out that fulfillment coaching program. Uh, all those are available to you. And I hope it's a blessing. Uh, Michelle says... I can feel a coolness coming over my body like it is calming down. It was like I was having an anxiety attack on my body that caused me to feel as though I was having hives. So right, so you say, Michelle, you feeling better right now? Let me know, Michelle. I want to know what you mean by that. Now I'm going to go. So was the prayer call... Thank you for the prayer. I was literally having an allergic reaction and it just loses. Wow. Gotcha. Thank you for that prayer. I was literally having an allergic reaction and it just loses itself. God gets the glory. That prayer came just in time. And I'm, I'm so glad that God used. Now you're in a calm state 
And if you got to replay this message over and over again, do what you have to do. Chris says, please pray for me. I'm struggling with hash. Let me see what that is. Because I never heard of it. Hash emotes. Okay. Autoimmune disorder. Okay. Let's pray for our brother. Father God, I thank you so much for your healing power. We believe in healing. I believe the anointing that is installed in myself and through the words that I'm speaking will it, it permeate my brother uh, Christopher right now. And so I come against this illness uh, called Hashimoto's. Whatever this disease is, it sounds demonic. Whatever this issue is, I come against it in Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, through your precious spirit, reveal to my brother the real root reason why this disease is in his life. Because physical diseases are a reflection of a disease or, or issue spiritually, emotionally, or mentally. So, Father, I'm thinking that you will begin to show him the root reason so that he will have healing in this season. And we believe it to be so. And you never do pray. Amen. Love y'all. Got to go. Uh, thank you all for your generosity and events, whether you get a book, card game, uh, whether you give whether you uh, get into the programs, however you guys engage with my resources. Thank you so much for your generosity in advance. And I pray that the tools and resources that, that you avail yourself to will create uh, 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 opportunities for you to have success. You welcome, my brother. Love you all. Y'all be